Today we're going to check out the Sonoff Dual. It's like the Sonoff Basic, but it has two relays, so it can control two different devices for about $8. Seems like a pretty good deal. The Dual definitely has potential, and Theo and the gang that make the Tasmoda firmware have recently made it even more useful, but it's still got a couple of issues. Let me show you. The company that makes these Sonoff switches is called ITED. I think that's how you say it. And in the lifespan of the Sonoff Dual, they've changed it several times. The most recent version is called the R2. I don't know exactly how many versions there were before that, but I know there's an original and then there's the R2. And there are some very significant differences between the two. On the original Dual, it's really hard to get to the GPIO 0 pin. There are two places where you can access pin GPIO 0. One of them is on the bottom side of the board. It's a tiny little pad next to a resistor right here. The other way to get to GPIO 0 on the original dual is to scrape the coating off of this conductor track right here. Neither one of those is a great option. I went with the soldering route and it was a major pain. And I spent well over an hour trying to solder a wire on that tiny little pad. There just isn't much there to solder to. Between the two choices, I'm gonna recommend that you go for the conductor tracing on top of the board, or maybe if you have a plus five on your dexterity rolls, you can go ahead and solder. Getting to GPIO zero on the R2 is different and much easier. Thankfully, they made the button zero pin GPIO zero. So all you have to do to get the board in programming mode is to put a jumper between the button zero pin and ground. Hallelujah. The configuration of Tasmoda is the same for the dual as it was for the basic. I did a video about this for the Sonoff Basic, but I'll go over the steps again real quick, just so you don't have to go stop and watch that video. You need to have the Arduino IDE, and in the same folder as the Arduino.exe file, you need a folder called Portable. Then when you open the Arduino IDE, under Board Managers, you need to add the URL for the ESP8266. You need to add the libraries for Arduino JSON and the PubSub Client library. Once you've added the PubSub Client library, go into the folder called Portable that you made, find the pubsubclient.h file. Open that file and change the MQTT max packet size to 512 and then save it. Now you can open up the sonoff.ino file, find the tab for the user config.h file and under project name, give this board a unique name. That name will show up on your connected devices list in your router and it will be the middle section of your MQTT topics which have to be unique and which you'll need to do automations in Home Assistant and then put in your Wi-Fi username and password, your MQTT broker IP address, username and password. Save it and you should be ready. Under tools, make sure you've got these settings here, which are the same as they are for the Sonoff Basic. Now with GPIO0 connected to ground, you're ready to connect your serial to USB adapter and power up the board in programming mode. The method that I use is to connect all those other wires first and then connect the three volt wire last. That way you don't need three hands. If you've got all that correct, when you hit upload, it should work without a problem. Should. Should. So once you've got Tasmoda uploaded, go to your router, go to attach devices, and look for the device with the project name that you put in the user config.h file. Copy the IP address, paste it in your browser, it'll open up the main page of the Tasmoda firmware. First thing you want to do is go to configuration, configure module, and select the configuration for the Sonoff dual board that you have. That will either be 05 dual or 39 dual R2. Once you've done that, save it and the board will restart. After the board restarts, if you have the R2, go back to configuration, back to configure module, and you'll be able to assign the button zero pin and the button one pin to function as external switches. If you have the original dual, I am sorry, but you are out of luck. There is no support for external switches with Tasmoda firmware on the original dual. Very sad. Another important thing to do is to set the serial log to zero. Apparently there's some kind of communication between the serial log and the relays. They communicate on the same baud rate or something that I don't understand. So what you have to do is go into the console and just type serial log zero. And that should eliminate any potential interference in communication with the relays. Once you've got all that set, your dual physically is ready to go. The one thing you have left to do is to set it up as a switch 
in Home Assistant. Because you have two relays, you have two MQTT topics. So in your configuration.yaml file, your switch setup will look like this. Once you've got that part done, you really are done. So I have my Sonoff Dual Original connected, and I have Tasmoda configured to treat it as a Sonoff Dual Original. So you can see that if I use the toggle buttons on the control page for Tasmoda, or the Home Assistant switches that I created, it will turn the lights on and off. With this arrangement, you can use Home Assistant to activate the relays, which is reasonably useful. Unfortunately, however, if you go to the board itself and try and use the button zero or button one pins, to activate the relays, they do not work. Sometimes it turns one on, sometimes it turns the other one on, sometimes it turns them both on and then both off. It's really, really unpredictable and really not very useful. There's no way you can get any kind of dependable result out of activating the button pins on the dual original. Very, very sad. Now I'll show you what happens if you have a dual original and you change the module type to a dual R2. Go to Configuration, Configure Module, select the dual R2, hit Save, and it'll restart. Once the light blinks on the board, you can hit Main Menu, and you'll get back to the main page. Now if you click the toggle buttons, or the Home Assistant buttons, it looks like it's working. It switches from off to on, but unfortunately, on the board itself, all that happens is the blue light comes on and goes off the relays are not activated. However, the button zero and the button one pins do turn the relays on and off. So if you have a dual original and you want to connect external switches, you can change the module type to R2 and the button pins on the board will work. But without MQTT and the ability to activate the relays in Home Assistant, that doesn't seem like it's gonna be super useful. So the bottom line for me on the Sonoff Dual is that the original is significantly less useful than the R2. Now, unfortunately, when you buy a Sonoff Dual, as of right now, December 2017, you may get the original or you may get the R2. The one I just ordered a week or so ago was still the original Dual. The R2 plus Tasmoda is great. It's as good as having two Sonoff Basics. It's better than having two Sonoff Basics because it's smaller. A lot easier to put in a switch box. The space that you save by using a dual instead of two basics is important. I've had several people ask questions about electrical codes and putting the Sonoff basic in your switch box. I asked an electrical engineer who knows a bit about the US electrical code to take a look at the video that I did on putting a Sonoff basic in the light switch box. And his major concern was the amount of space that was taken up in the box. According to the US code, you can only fill one of those switch boxes to a certain percentage of the total volume. And by having full-size rocker switches in there and one or more Sonoff basics, you're taking up more space than what the code allows. So that's a great reason to use a Sonoff Dual instead. It's also a really good reason to probably not use standard US rocker switches, just because they're so big. When you can replace them with a very small low voltage button or switch instead. So in my house, we're gonna have a lot of push buttons as light switches. And I think that's actually pretty cool. So that's it for this one. Sonoff Dual, as long as it's the R2, if it's the original, sorry. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for your comments and your questions. Keeps me on my toes. In the next couple of videos, I'm gonna talk about flashing Tasmoda on a Sonoff over the air and how to control your holiday LEDs if you have more than one control board. Good useful stuff. Until then, adios.